Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. We are going to do the second problem from the weekly contest 304. It's called maximum number of groups entering a competition. Let's try to understand first of all what they are saying. So you are given a grades array which represents the grades of students. You would like to enter all these students into a competition in ordered non-empty groups such that the ordering meets the following condition. Sum of the grades of students in the 8th group is less than the sum of the grades in the i plus 1th group. Total number of students in 8th group is less than the total number of students in i plus 1th group. Okay, let's try to take an example. Suppose this is the array. So, you have to first of all divide students into groups. How, have to, how you have to divide them? First, you have to take let's say one student in the first group. Then you have to take number of students here should be greater than this, right? So, if you are taking one student here, in the next group, you need to take at least two students because two should be greater than one, right? So you can take three students also, you can take 13 students also, you can take 130 students also, but you should definitely take more students than the previous group. So minimum that you start from uh, in the next group you start is you at least take two students, okay? Next, what do you have to do? Next time you have to try to take more students than two students. So at least you have to take at least you have to take three students okay you can take more students also but at least you have to take three students okay so in the first group uh, you have to take at least one student in the second group you have to take at least two students and if you are taking two students from the third group onwards you can take at least three students and so on right so there is a simple question now what we are supposed to do you have to return the maximum number of groups that can be formed okay now let's try to take example but this this is just one condition which we discussed right the number of students in each group is just one condition you also have to follow the second condition what is the second condition is the student that you are taking right uh, the the grades of the students that you are taking okay has also to be in increasing order for example let me consider one case let's say first student i am taking is 10 okay let's say i have to choose the next two students right for the second group let's say i have to choose two students so can I choose students 3 and 5? If I choose students 3 and 5, what will happen? The sum of grades of these two students will become equal to 8, right? Because 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. But in the first group, the sum of grades was 10. So this is not correct. This is not correct because you have to take the sum here, right? The sum which is 8 here, they should be greater than the previous grouping, uh, the grades of the previous group, right? So in this example, you cannot take 10, okay? Or here, if you take, you cannot take 3 and 5. Maybe we can take some other thing. Let's say I, I take 7 as one of the students. Let's say I take 12 as one of the students. So this is fine because here 7 plus 12 will become equal to 19. And here I have the grade as 10, right? So this is valid, okay? This is correct. This is one possibility, okay? Now, uh, let me try uh, to see what I can do. For the third group, can I take 6 plus 3 plus 5? If I do that, 6 plus 3 will be 9. 9 plus 5 will be 14. Now, again, you can check that. 14 is less than 19 this is again not allowed right because here the grade should be greater than the previous group right so here it is not allowed this is not a valid possi possibility so if you have to make a valid possibility how will you group the students okay first of all you have to consider this uh see let's let's just consider one condition okay let's just consider one simple condition okay let's just say let's just consider the second condition okay so what we are first of all checking we are checking that the grades of students of the ith group okay and let me write the next group grades of students of the i plus one group okay for now let's forget uh, the number of students condition okay there are two conditions right for now what i'm going to do i am only going to consider this condition okay the uh, number of uh, the sum of grades in the i plus one group should be greater than the grades of ith group okay let, let's just make the problem simpler and let's just consider this condition so what you are going to do to satisfy this condition you have to at least take the number here greater than this number right at least this you have to do so for example the best way to do this is to take the numbers in increasing order okay so what i'm going to do i have to ensure that the sum here is greater than the sum in the ith group right so i plus oneth group grade should be greater than the ith group so what i'm going to do i naturally if i don't have any condition to number the students in a particular way what will i do to make the maximum groups what will i do first group i'll give the smallest student three. Second group i'll give the next smallest student uh, which is five right and in the next group what i will do i will give the next student which is seven right in the next group i'll give the uh, sorry which is six sorry which is six right so third uh, third smallest is equal to six so the next group i will give six then in the next group i will give seven in the next group i will give ten then in the next group i will give twelve this is what i will do if i have no condition to uh, order number of students in a particular group if i ignore that condition then according to the 
sum of grades condition what i will do i will order it this way why because 5 will be greater than 3 always if i order in increasing order i will always satisfy all the conditions 6 will be greater than 5 7 will be greater than 6 Ten will be greater than seven. Twelve will be greater than ten. And this way, if I have only one student in each group, I will form maximum number of groups, right? So if I have no condition on the numbering, then what I am going to do? I am just going to arrange them in sorted order or increasing order. How many groups can I get? One, two, three, four, five, six. I will get six groups easily, right? I will get six groups, but I cannot get six groups because I have to also club the students. So I will have to club the students. So this student, if this student goes in the first group. I have one student, right? So I have to club the next two students. So next two students I have to club. Then if I take minimum two here, minimum if I take two here, I have to take three. So then I can club it accordingly, right? So in this example, I will have three total number of groups. So the first thing is you have to at least arrange them in increasing order. After arranging them in increasing order, okay, then. you can easily just club them together according to the minimum condition why we are taking minimum condition so that we can form maximum number of groups right see i need not have club them into 1 2 and 3 groups okay what i can do is i can also club them like this let's say i take first first student in the first group and let's say i take the remaining five students in the next group right so this is also valid but in this way i will get only two groups okay in this way i will get only two groups but i want to maximize the number of groups the in the question the aim is to maximize the number of groups right so if i have only two groups it is not maximum how can i maximize the number of groups i will try to take as less students as possible i will take minimum minimum students in one group because i want more groups right so first in the first group i will try to keep only one student next group i will try to take the minimum possible what is the minimum possible it has to be just greater than 1 what is just greater than 1 it is 2 and here it has to be just greater than 2 it is 3 so in this way if i club them together then i will get the maximum possible number of groups so if i get the maximum possible number of groups here i have three groups right so the so what we are doing uh, we are trying to take the minimum possible students in each group so first group at least you have to take one student second group you have to take two students third group you have to take three students and so on right so uh, what is the number of groups like this you have to try to take up to n groups n is the total number of groups that you have now this has to be less than the size of your array right so whatever is the size of your array so let's say the size of our array is s so whatever it is this is the condition to solve this question so what is the summation of 1 to n so we all know this from our earlier classes it is n into n plus 1 by 2 this should be less than s so what is this n square plus n should be less than 2s so n square plus n minus 2s should be less than 0 now if we have to solve this quadratic equation we can use the formula which we all have been dreading to remember minus b plus minus 100 root b square minus 4ac by 2a right this is used to solve a quadratic equation so in this case what is your b b is equal to 1 b is just the coefficient uh, of of the term with power 1 right so b is 1 a is equal to 1 a is the coefficient uh, of the uh, term with power 2 so here n square has a coefficient of 1 and what is c c is equal to minus 2 into s so if you just put it in this formula you will get the value of n right so what you can do minus 1 plus minus under root 1 uh, plus 8s by 2 so this is what you can get for n and you have to take only positive number right so you can take the positive one so that you get a positive n right so this is your formula you can just uh, put this and you will get your answer so let me take s s is equal to the size or the length of the array and what you can return is you can return this answer from this formula minus 1 plus square root of 1 plus 8 into s okay and this whole thing divided by 2 right so this whole thing divided by 2 so this is what you can finally return so let's run and see this is working and by the way time and space complexity is obviously order of 1 because you are just using simple formula to solve this question